Today's tutorial might be the most important one I've ever done. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate the support. If you're brand new to the channel, please subscribe now because I don't want you to miss out. So enough talk, let's jump into it. So here's where I got the idea for this tutorial. I was on PacSun, I saw this design. It reminded me of, you know, graphics that I've created before, but I like that it has a vintage vibe mixed with more modern elements. I know the question you're asking, is it weird that the rings are around his arms? Yes, that is a little weird. So here's the design I came up with. This is what we're recreating today. I went with Vince Carter as the subject. To me, one of the swaggiest players of all time in the NBA, especially in the 90s. He reminds me of like Bo Jackson in some ways in that like he didn't brag or boast. He wasn't like super outspoken or like animated. He just let his game do the talking for him. And I can definitely appreciate that sort of attitude. We're mixing some AI technology within Photoshop and outside of Photoshop along with, you know, tried and true design methods that I've shown on this channel before, which is why I really think this tutorial is one of my most important ones ever. So the first thing I knew I needed to do was grab this Toronto Raptors logo because that was going to set the course for the color palette. So let's jump into Google, grab this logo. I just Googled, you know, 90s Toronto Raptors logo. This is an alternative version of their, of their logo. Um, and I just liked it more, so I used this right click copy image back to photoshop and we'll just command v and paste it into our artboard on the right side and i'll just sort of position it the way it is on the left side so the first thing i'll do is grab the eyedropper tool and i'll just click some red click the you know silver and click the purple so that over in our swatches right here we start to sort of develop this color palette i'll show you another route that you could go so you could go to window workspace uh, photography and then click the plus here under libraries and go to extract from image and then that is essentially going to build out a color theme if you click color theme it'll build that theme from whatever image you have our image is not super complex so I just use the eyedropper tool but this is pretty cool you can do this as well then you just click save to CC libraries click close and then you've got your color theme right here if you want to use that. So kind of a cool trick. So let's start by bringing in this image on the right side. So we'll jump to Google. I just searched Vince Carter Raptors on Google images, and then I filtered it by larger than two megapixels. If you want to do that, um, and I definitely suggest doing that if you are using Google images to get higher res photos. Over on the right side, you'll see quick settings and you'll see this gear icon. Click that and then go to advanced search. And then right here where it says narrow your results by image size, change that to larger than two megapixels. Sometimes I do two, sometimes I do four. It kind of depends on what I'm looking for. If it's like something very broad, like eagles or, you know, whatever, something, an animal, I'll do larger than four megapixels because there's going to be thousands and thousands of images of something broad. But if it's something very specific, like Vince Carter Raptors, you might not find a ton of super, super high res images. And so I go to two megapixels and sometimes I'll even just go to large images, but this is gonna work for us. Here's that image that I found. So we can bring this in, right click, copy image back to our canvas, command V and we'll paste it in. And I'm just going to grab the rectangular marquee tool here and just sort of grab this section of the photo that we need and then hit command J and that's gonna throw it to the top and then we can get rid of this other uh, image. So let's grab this and size it up. I'm holding down the shift key to maintain the aspect ratio and I'm just gonna sort of eyeball it so that it's the same size as what we have on the left side. That should work. And then I'm going to go to Window Properties, and that's going to bring up the Quick Actions Remove Background function here. So click that, and that is going to remove the background for us. Does a pretty decent job because it was sort of a blurry background. More complex images, you might need to do some finessing in order to get a proper cutout, but this is definitely gonna work for us. So I'm going to build out this design 
in full color at first. So I'm not gonna change Vince to this purple that you're seeing now. We're gonna do that later. And I'm gonna explain why as we go. Let's see, the next thing we can do is, let's jump into some AI stuff. And I'm gonna bring in this dinosaur, this Velociraptor to be more specific. So jump back to Google and I am in playground.com. So this is a website that allows you to generate AI images based on a prompt. If you're not familiar with Playground AI, I do cover it in my last video a little bit more in detail. I don't go into like crazy detail. You'd want probably a specific video about playground.com. You might find it under Playground AI. I think that's what it used to be called. Um, but I just searched hyper realistic velociraptor angry full body arms and legs i think i was trying it without arms and legs first and it just kept giving me like profiles of just like the head of a velociraptor and i wanted it to be the full body so i'll just gen generate some new images so you can see how this works but this is ultimately the image we're going to be using so down here um, where it says exclude from image i put custom and then i put in ugly, deformed, noisy, blurry, distorted. I think this actually might be default in here. I, I honestly can't remember, but if it's not, just put in these sort of prompts to exclude any of this stuff. Over on the right side, I changed it to number of images three instead of one, just to give us some options. Um, up here, dimensions, I did 1024, 10, 1024 didn't mess with any of this stuff. I think maybe quality might be different on default, but I set it to 50. And then I just click generate and let it do its thing. So this is what it came up with. I find it so interesting. It can't quite figure out like what a Velociraptor's arms would actually look like. So it like kind of gives it human arms. Like normally a Velociraptor's arms, I think would be like in front and be like short, sort of like closer to a T-Rex, but it kind of gives it more like human arms. <laughs> so that's why I went with this one. Cause I don't know. I didn't mind that it's like a little bit like, I don't know, cartoony and maybe not an anatomically realistic to what a Velociraptor <laughs> looked like. If there's any archaeologists out there, sorry if this is like not at all even close to what a Velociraptor looked like, but I thought it looked cool. So this is what we're going to use. So I just went to download right here and we can bring this into Photoshop. So I'm not going to use AI to further like enhance this image. I know that you can upscale images using AI and AI websites, but I, I don't necessarily think we need to do that. So I'm just going to go to image, image size, and I am going to make some adjustments here under resample. Instead of automatic, I'm going to click preserve details 2.0. And then I'm going to, on reduce noise, bring it to like 50, okay? So let's just change this to 50. And then I'm going to change the resolution to 300. So that's just going to enlarge it, preserve some of the details, and make it a little bit more usable for our purposes. So let's blow this thing up. We'll zoom back out. And then I'm going to hit Command A to grab this whole canvas. Command C, then back into our canvas. And Command V to paste it in. So pretty large and let's zoom in just so we can see some detail. Pretty decent. I mean, this is definitely going to work for our purposes. First thing I'm going to do is flip it. So the reason I flipped it is because I've got Vince Carter already looking off to the right. And now the dinosaur is looking the same way. In order to flip this, I'm going to click show transform controls over here on the top left. And then I'm going to click and then I'm going to right click above the image and go to flip horizontally and that'll just quickly flip this image. From here, I do need to scale it down a little bit. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and bring it down. If you wanna make it a smart object before doing that, go for it. I don't really think it's really necessary in this case. And then from here, we're going to again, use this remove background function to get rid of this background. Now we've got a pretty clean cutout. Let's just take a look and see if there's anything we need to further remove. So I do see some white left over right here. So in order to get rid of this, I'm just going to make sure the foreground is set to black and I'm going to grab a brush. I just realized we're still in the photo workspace. That's funny. So we're going to click window workspace essentials and get out of that and get back to our regular workspace. So now we're going to click the brush tool over here on the left side. I'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller and with again, black selected as our foreground color, I'll be able to just sort of paint away uh, anything here so that we can remove this part of the image. 
have to make the brush a little bit bigger than that. There we go. Cool. Doesn't need to be like super perfect. Obviously, like depending on what you're doing, you'll want to be more detailed on this part. But here I'm just going to sort of be loose with it so we can move through this tutorial. And the other thing too is you could just use like the lasso tool if that's easier for you and just like make the general shape that you want like this and then just go to edit, fill foreground color and then just fill that area in and that's going to remove it. Okay, so now that we've cleaned up this image and removed those little pieces of white left over from the remove to background function, We've still got this sort of ghost stroke around the outside. So let me show you how you can get rid of that. So we're going to click into this layer mask right here. So you can see layer mask thumbnail. We're going to double click that. And that is going to bring us into the properties window here. And we'll see shift edge. So in this case, I think if we just shift this down a little bit, so to the left, it's going to get rid of that ghost sort of stroke. So once I see it like pretty much gone, I'll just click OK. And then when we zoom out, we can see it's pretty much taken care of. So we should be good on that. And I'm going to bump it down here in our layers panel. So it's behind Vince and pretty close to the right size here. Looks like the, the image of Vince will need to go down a little bit here. Cool. Okay. One thing you might notice is on the left side, you can see all of Vince's shoes, but on the right, it's cut off. I use generative fill over here on the left. And I'll be honest, I've tried using it in this tutorial to do the same thing. And I'm just not getting the same results. And that's just something I want to address really quickly, which I think is pretty interesting. I've had tutorials that I've done on YouTube just completely ripped off and people have recreated the exact designs because they have access to Google images or Pexels or whatever I was using, all the same fonts, and they can create it verbatim and sell it, right? Now that AI is a thing and, and there's no way for them to get the exact image that I got through generative fill, they can't really copy it. So that's kind of interesting. I mean, they can probably do something similar, but it won't be exact. And that's just something for as much as people shit talk AI, it is sort of an interesting concept that, you know, you can't recreate it uh, exactly. That being said, I think my, what might actually work better here is using the remove tool, which is also like magic in itself, but I'll show you how it works. So I'm going to make the size a little bit smaller. And then over here, I've got this image selected and I'm just gonna draw basically where his shoe would be and then connect it. And then the remove tool is basically going to not remove, it's actually going to add to this image to create the rest of this shoe. We're gonna see how good of a job it does. Maybe it'll be great, maybe it'll look terrible, but I think this will actually work better than generative fill, which I did on the original design. So I think that's pretty decent. Let's see what it comes up with on this one. We'll just kind of do the same thing. I don't think it needs to be perfect because it's such a small little element as much as, you know, the devils in the details. I think there are some cases where it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. So there we go. Let's zoom in again. You know, it's not like super great, but when you zoom out, I mean, it looks pretty good. It honestly looks better than this anyways. So I'm actually glad we did it this way. So I'm going to roll with this. I'm happy with it. I'm going to move it over a little bit here so it's closer to what's going on in this graphic on the left side. And then I'm going to double click this photo layer and let's start renaming some of these just so we know what we're doing. So we got background, Vince, dunking, we've got dinosaur. Yeah, that's right. I can't spell Velociraptor without <laughs> probably having to Google it. All right, so here we've got Vince, Vince photo right and here we've got the logo which is great that we're renaming it because I just realized it should be on the top layer logo and then we'll bring that down here right to there all right cool so it's looking pretty good looking pretty close to what we've got on the left side this background image I'm going to double click it and then I'm going to do an inner glow of black to just sort of fade out the edges and I've got size all the way up. Choke is at zero. Um, and again, it's just black, like nothing crazy. They're not messing with quality at all. Click OK. OK, so we're looking closer and closer to this graphic. 
I think we can fade up this photo of Vince right here. So let's do that. We're just going to double click Vince photo right. We're going to gradient overlay and I'm just going to reset to default. And then I'm going to click into this gradient box and select this second option under basics because that's a color to transparent. And so now we're going from black to transparent and scale I'm gonna bring down to 10. And then I'm just gonna drag it with my mouse over here on the left side, just so we've got a sort of like nice gradient there. Click okay, boom, all right. So we're looking good, looking good. I can see this dinosaur needs to go over a little bit to the left, very small detail, but something I'm noticing. There's some elements that we need to get rid of like these other players and some of this background stuff. So I'm going to duplicate this layer just in case we need to go back to the original for any reason, because I'm about to get destructive. I'm gonna use the brush tool over here on the left side, uh, black as the color, and then I'm, I'm literally just gonna brush in here and get rid of some of this stuff, just like this, this, I guess we can, there we go, get rid of like that, get rid of this person. Some of this stuff I'm gonna leave in, because I like the way it looks, like these lights, and uh, the banners and the rafters, I like that, but we're gonna get rid of most of the stuff here on the bottom. So I'm actually just gonna grab the rectangular marquee tool, grab all this, go to edit fill, and just sort of get rid of all that. So next up, we're gonna bring in this smaller image of Vince, and then we'll move on to text, and then we're gonna get to some generative fill stuff. It's gonna get weird, but I feel like it's definitely gonna be useful for everyone watching. So let's jump back to Google Images, grab this image of Vince, shout out to AI as well. We're gonna jump back to Photoshop, paste this in and size it up a little bit. Doesn't have to be sized up a ton. Move it right here. I'm gonna do a quick uh, background removal as well. So window properties, quick actions, remove background, just to get rid of some of this stuff on the right side. I don't think we'll need to really do anything else, like even though there's like more to this image over here, it's covered up by this dinosaur, so I think we're gonna be fine just leaving it like that. If you wanted to get rid of it, get rid of stuff that's not showing, you can, and it will actually help with the size of the file, but it's just, you know, a little thing that you can do or not do, it's just like a personal preference. So let's get into this text. I'm going to grab the T over here on the left side, which is the horizontal type tool click into our canvas and I'll type out Carter. The font we're using is Latin wide. I'm going to make sure show transform controls is checked up at the top and then grab the corner of this text, drag it out holding down the shift key and make it a bit larger. Then I'm going to click the move tool, bring it down. And then we're going to use the other T tool so first we'll select the horizontal type tool and then at the top you'll see this other T icon. That is the create warped text tool. So we'll click that and then we'll have this box where we can select arc upper, which probably seems counterintuitive because it's going down, but we're gonna change the bend to negative, let's say 15 should probably do it. Actually, I'm gonna go 20, negative 20. Click OK. Now we're gonna grab the move tool again over here at the top left. And I'm not gonna hold down the shift key because I don't wanna maintain the aspect ratio. And that's gonna allow me to drag this up. And we may actually want less of a bend because I can already see it has less over here. It's hard to remember you know, the exact values that I use on every design, but it's pretty close. I think it might be just like 15 like I originally thought. So we can just click back up into that T and change the bend a little bit. Yeah, let's go 15. Cool. The next thing I'm gonna do is apply a layer style to this. So we're gonna double click this text over here and I'm going to styles and I've already imported my 90s NBA textiles pack. Seemed appropriate for this design and I went through a few options and landed on, I believe this one because I like that it had the black sort of gradient at the bottom I did change, I think, the inner shadow, the distance a little bit. I just brought it in just a tiny bit, clicked OK. And then to get it to be this like purple color, I first hit Command G and that put it into its own little group right here. And then down at the bottom of the layers panel, I clicked Gradient Map. OK, so right now it's grabbing like this red and white, but we're going to change that in a second. Right click 
create clipping masks. So now it's just clipped to this group that has our text in it, right? And then we're going to highlight this thumbnail right here that shows the gradient. And that's this gradient box right here. So from here, you can create a whole new gradient. This is the gradient that I used and I saved it and I'll show you how first I created it. So down here, we've got these stoppers um, and you can use these to create new colors, right? So I just grabbed this color purple from our swatches right here that we created using this logo, remember at the beginning. So I grabbed that purple, clicked okay, and then I grabbed this silver right here, right from here, and I can see it, it's a little bit lighter. I think maybe I just wasn't happy with how dark it was. And so I changed that right here, clicked okay, and boom. Now we've got our, um, you know, colorized version of our original uh, layer style. So you can always color those layer styles however you want, which is pretty useful. So right now this text on the right side doesn't look exactly like it does on the left. And that's because on the left, I've got a selective colors adjustment layer and a levels adjustment layer, which we're going to add later. So don't worry about this not looking exactly like it does on the left. So let's get into this other text where it says Vince and half man, half amazing. I'm going to grab the horizontal type tool again. And up here at the very top, I'm going to click in and we're going to change the font first. Now, I don't think I can I can say the name of this font on the channel, but it's right here. Uh, if you wanna pause and find out what the name is. So we're going to size this up. This is just the default text right now. And I'll type out half man, half amazing. And we're going to change half to a different font, which is Apple Garamond. And we're gonna change half here to the same font, Apple Garamond. So that just brings a little bit more sauce into the design. Uh, it's not as sterile as just keeping the same font throughout, right? So the next thing I did on this text was add an inner shadow and an outer stroke. So let's double click into it and add those. I'll just zoom in so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. All right, so first inner shadow, we've just got the default settings going right now. So we'll change the opacity to 100, change the blend mode to normal, change the color right here to this gray. And then we're really just gonna mess with distance and we'll make sure that size is at zero pixels. But let's change the distance to maybe like seven or eight. And then we'll change the angle right here to 135. That's gonna give us a nice angle. If you wanna make sure um, use global light is on or off, to me, it, it doesn't always matter. I usually keep it on, but there are gonna be some cases where, I don't know, you want different lighting somewhere else and you don't necessarily love uh, when use global light is on. In this case, we're gonna keep it on because I think it works for this. So the next thing we'll do is add this outside stroke. You can change the color right here. We're changing it to black, click OK, size, yeah, like 20 is going to be good. So go with 20, click OK, I'll zoom out, and then I'm just going to bump this text up just using the arrow, you know, the arrows on the keyboard. Next up, we're going to add the Vince text. So I'm going to find this dinosaur, and I'm going to make sure the text sits right under it. So I'm going to click the layer that's right beneath, grab our horizontal text tool, type out Vince and we want it to be that same font we used earlier, which we're not gonna talk about, and then size it up, holding down the shift key, dragging the corner, and then I think I like tilted it a little bit to the left, so we'll do that. Cool, bring it up a little bit, and then I'm going to double click into this text, add that same inner shadow we used down here, change the distance a little bit because it's bigger text, so it can be a little bit more visible. 17, yeah, about double what we did on the bottom here. We're gonna add the stroke as well, increase that a little bit, maybe, maybe not. No, we might be able to stick with 20, all right. And then I added a drop shadow, so I'm going to click this effects right here, and then make sure show all effects um, is clicked so that we can see everything in our styles panel. 
And so we're going to change the opacity of this drop shadow at the bottom to 100, change the blend mode to normal, and then I'm going to change the distance and make sure again size is at zero, just like we did with, um, with the in, inner uh, shadow here. So I'm just gonna change the distance, have a nice drop shadow, boom, click OK, and we are good to go. Okay, just make sure it's like sized and is similar to what we did on the left side. It's pretty damn close. We're doing pretty good over here, to be honest. Um, so the majority of this design is pretty much done and you could stop here, but I feel like this is where it really starts to get good. We're actually gonna jump into generative fill, which should be pretty interesting. I've never done it on this channel. So the reason that I do it um, on full color images rather than like making Vince purple and then adding in um, some generative fill options is because there's a chance that it will take on the colors that I'm using in the graphic, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But if I decide later on, oh, I don't like that Vince is purple, he might end up with a purple spider on his back. And I don't want that. I might want a full color spider. So you can always go from full color to you know purple or whatever color you want but it's hard to go from purple back to full color if that makes sense so i'll just show you how i added in these little elements i just grabbed the lasso tool over here on the left side and then i just drew sort of the general area where i wanted the spider grabbed uh, this contextual text uh, toolbar and again if you don't see it window contextual task bar i think i just said toolbar contextual task bar and then I'll just click generative fill, type in spider, click generate, let it do its thing. It's not gonna give us the same results as on the left because that's not how generative fill works. It's gonna give us different results. I'm sure it will be something similar, just not exactly the same. Okay, so we've got some options here. That's pretty cool. A little, I like this one. This is, this is I feel like closer to what we've got going here. I actually like this result more, so that's great. What I really love is that if you zoom in, like it's got the shadows, it's keeping, you know, the jersey as well. So it's it's actually recreating this area as well. So it's not just the spider. It's not just randomly placing a spider on here. It's literally using the exact uh, photo in the background for the result, which is pretty cool. So from here, this is where you would want to add your gradient maps or or coloring methods um, right so i'm going to select this spider and then i'm also going to select this layer so i'm going to hold down the shift key so that i can select both of them and then i'm going to command g to put them in their own group together so now that we have both of these elements in a group i'm going to go to add new fill or adjustment layer and click gradient map and that is going to bring up this gradient maps uh, properties box. And I'm going to click that and use the gradient map we used previously. Click OK. And then I'm going to right click, create clipping mask. So now it's only clipping to this spider and this image of Vince, right? So that's what I did on this. So now we've got purple Vince, purple spider. What else do we need to make purple? We've got a purple background. So we'll go down to uh, this dunking image it's also this little image of vince here and then right above it is where we'll add our gradient map same thing and if you don't know how to save these gradient maps when you create them all you have to do is click new right here and it will make the gradient map that you created down here so you can always use it later on so we'll click ok so we're looking good now we're looking you know closer to what we have on the left side right so I'm going to continue to use generative fill to build out some other elements. That's how I've been using generative fill. It's not the main thing in your image. It's building out the graphic and then adding in just little bits and pieces of generative fill just to sort of add like some extra sauce to your graphic. So you can see I did that here on the text. And so I'm going to jump to the top of the graphic and I'm going to just draw in areas where I wanted. Here's what I found interesting when I did this. I think that it actually used like part of this dinosaur 
and mixed it with spider webs because if you actually zoom in over here like these are really not spider webs i don't know what it is but it just like looked cool to me and so i thought let's just keep it um so that being said i don't know if that's gonna happen when i do it here i don't know if it was just like a random fluke thing that happened we're gonna find out so i'm gonna click generative fill i'm gonna put in i think i used two words spider webs maybe plural i don't even know we're just gonna see what it does it might be a completely different result we're gonna find out so this was the result i don't really know what it's thinking because it didn't really change this at all it just sort of like made it warped it didn't do anything here and then it added this little thing the other results really are not much better like you get it this is honestly the best result out of all of them in terms of like being closer to what it did here it almost did the exact same thing here which is cool so the only thing i could really think to do is to just try to do this little piece again and see if we can get something closer to what it did on the right so spider web generate that's so this is like what's equally like cool and aggravating about generative fill um you know normally you wouldn't be like recreating the exact design so this would never be an issue because i already did the thing that i like over here on the left but now we're just sort of like playing and like seeing what we get as results like a little spider like i guess that's okay that's kind of cool um i'm gonna keep doing different prompts i'm gonna do spider webs and see what we get and honestly if we don't get the exact result i'm not really going to stress it because the biggest thing was just like showing you all how generative fill could work and how you could start using it so here i mean that's kind of cool like multiple little spiders all right i like that i'm good with that so the other two places that i used uh, generative fill was to create this little spider here so i'm just going to go to the top layer where we're adding all the other you know spider stuff i'm just going to make a little section here with the lasso tool generative fill spider see what it comes up with okay so these are the first three spiders that it came up with for some reason it started making them blue i'm not really sure why so i just generated some more options it made a few other ones i was like okay these are okay i did it a third time and it finally created like white spiders similar to this one so i couldn't tell you why it did that but whatever all you have to do is literally click a button and you can generate all day until you're happy with the result okay really quick i gotta fix this because it's bothering me i noticed that vince's shoes are getting caught up in this inner glow in this background image so to fix that i'm just going to use the lasso tool and i'm going to grab where his shoes should be and hit command j and then i'm just going to turn off the inner glow on this so now it's back to his shoes kind of going outside of the frame which is cool and looks better than having it cut off by that inner glow because we went through all the trouble of making his sneakers uh full so let's make sure we can see them so back to generative fill um the final place that i used it was actually at the top here so you can see on the left side there's this sort of like spider-esque border right so there's nothing wrong with having this just like faded at the top it looks fine but if you can make the border a little bit more interesting uh, and it's very quick to do, why not experiment with it? So I just used the lasso tool. Uh, I just clicked up here at the top. So I'm on the very top layer and I just lassoed. We're gonna try it with the purple first and just like see what it comes up with. And if we need to go to full color on this and then add the gradient map on top of the result, we can do that too. But let's just see what it comes up with first. I'm gonna go a little bit more into this image here, a little bit more here. All right, cool, sure, let's try this. So I'm going to type out spider webs. So I'm actually good with this first result on the left side. I love the way this spider web looks here. At the top, not so much. I also think it's really cool that like the net sort of mimics the spider web. I didn't notice that the first time I designed it. So cool little bonus there. Um, I'm going to try to just like recreate the top here and do sort of like generative fill on top of generative fill. So instead of writing spider webs, I'm going to try writing white cobwebs and see if that helps. 
Sometimes it's just about like changing the prompt in little ways just to get better results. Cause I don't know, maybe it was thinking like, so do you want spiders or do you want cobwebs? Do you want a web of spiders? What do you want? So maybe just being a little bit more specific will be helpful. So the first thing it did was add a brown piece of wood. Why exactly? I don't know. It's, it's robot stuff. So the next result is a little bit closer to what we want. I think this is actually pretty cool. I like that it sort of also used um, these banners in the rafters and it sort of made like, it's almost like the banners are being held up by the spider webs. Um, I think I wanna add some more over here just to sort of like balance it out because it feels like a little bit heavy right here. So I'm gonna write white spider webs. I'm going back to spider webs because I actually wouldn't be mad if there was like some little spiders crawling around on this logo. Okay, so these are pretty cool. I like that it's sort of like uh, blending into this logo a bit. This third option is actually pretty good. I could see honestly adding cobwebs all day to this, just like adding more here, adding to these just little areas of negative space um, and just having fun with it. So let's get the levels and selective color adjustment layers added onto this design. I'm actually gonna group all of these together. So I'll grab this bottom layer, hold down shift, click the very top layer and then command G to make a group inside of this artboard here. And then I'm going to go down to this bottom uh, half circle that says create new fill or adjustment layer, go to levels, and then I'm gonna right click and uh, create clipping masks. So now it's just clipping to this group that we created, right? So when you click this little thumbnail here, that's going to bring up this properties window if you don't see it, window, properties, and then I'm going to sort of blow out this design by moving this middle stopper to the left. And that's gonna to start to sort of blow it out. And you just have to sort of use your own judgment here. Next, we'll add in our selective color adjustments layer. We're actually gonna use a preset um, from my vintage photo uh, selective color pack but I'll show you how to get this selective color in here and, and some of the functions you can mess with. So it's gonna be in the same place as levels over here on the right side, add new fill or adjustment layer, selective colors at the bottom. We'll right click, create clipping mask. And then in here, we'll go to load selective color preset. And I'm just gonna to navigate to my selective color preset um, in this vintage photo selective color pack from Fuller Mo click vintage photo 02, click open, and that's automatically going to set the selective color. Now, what I mostly messed around with on these are neutrals and blacks. So if you wanna just play around with those um, and do your own thing, that's cool. I just found, you know, it's easier since I have that selective color. I'll be honest, the only thing that's throwing me off right now is this gradient on the Carter text. Um, but that's honestly just me being like nitpicky. So I'm just gonna change the scale to 150 and then bring it up. So it's closer to how it looks on the left. Okay, so let's mock this up on a t-shirt, see how it looks. We're going to use Mockable. And if you're not familiar with Mockable, uh, it's mockable.com. This is um, a website that I co-founded with Jeremy from Pixel Sauce. Pretty amazing. It basically just allows you to get any mock-up that you need directly in Photoshop. There's a library of, of over 4,000 mock-ups um, and you can just literally search, like if I put in Shaka, looking for some Shaka-ware mock-ups. Uh, let's say I wanna use uh, Retro Kids, duh, duh, duh. which one? Let's use this 7.5 ounce uh, max heavyweight t-shirt, right? So I've already downloaded this one, but just for the sake of this video, Let's look at one of these and just, sure, let's download this one. Just so you can see in real time how it works. Um, it's a subscription-based uh, website. You know, you can get as many credits as you need. The more credits you want, the higher the prices per month, but it's um, a pretty huge time saver. And uh, yeah, I love it. I'm glad that it's around. I wish this would have been around, you know, whatever, 10 years ago. Let's get our design added in here. So we're going to grab all of these layers here and I'm just gonna right click merge layers. Now I'm going to command A to grab the whole canvas, command C to copy over into our mockup. I'll double click this thumbnail where it says your design. And then I'm going to click the placement guide um, as visible so I can see what I'm doing. Command V will paste in our design. 
and I'm going to convert to a smart object, size it down. I'm not really worried about all this black because I'll show you what I'm going to do in a second. Going to change the blend mode to screen. Then I'm going to remove this replace with your design just by hiding it. And then I'm going to size it up how I want. Then I'm going to hide this placement guide, hit command S and then jump back over into our mock-up and we are good to go. And here is Vince Carter with his first shot. I hope you learned something in today's video. I'm really trying to bridge the gap between having, you know, a solid foundation and skill set and eye for design while implementing some of this new technology that's coming out. Because if the overall goal is just to make better graphics, I really think harnessing both is important. That being said, this is definitely not going to become an AI generative fill robot channel. I definitely want to make sure that we're always being, you know, unique and we're being thoughtful with how we use um, any new technology, whether that's my design tool or AI or whatever. I just want to make sure that you're all using it in a responsible way. I'm most active on Instagram. It's at fuller.moe. So give me a follow over there. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.